Canada is entering one of the most dramatic defense turning points in its modern history. And everything begins with a single truth that hits like a shockwave. Canada is no longer convinced that the F-35 program delivers the value, the jobs, or the security it once promised. And the Griefen is stepping in with an offer the United States simply cannot match. It is more than just a procurement review. It is a statement that Ottawa is willing to fight its economic future with the same intensity that it guards its airspace. This change is rocking defense circles across the world because it signifies more than just a procurement review for the government. Remember to give this article a like and subscribe to receive additional in-depth defense research. This story is transforming the global military economy, and you need to stay ahead of it in order to be successful. In Canada, the real industrial benefits of the F-35 program are being called into doubt. Grapen has arrived with a plan that will revolutionize Canada's jobs economy. A new route of autonomy is challenging decades of procurement that has been dominated by the United States. Over a period of several decades, the F-35 program was regarded as unbeatable, a benchmark of the next generation of air power and a representation of the technological cohesion of the Western world. When Canada joined that program, they did so with the expectation that it would provide tens of billions of dollars in long-term economic prospects and thousands of jobs. However, the government of Canada has recently acknowledged that the United States retains approximately 70% of the value that is generated by the F-35 supply chain. Melanie Jolie, Canada's Minister of Foreign Affairs, added fuel to the fire by conceding that the claims of job creation require a serious reality check. The Minister of Defense of Canada has openly said that the industrial benefits are smaller than envisaged. Not to be confused with rumors or conjecture, these are concerns that have been voiced publicly by high-ranking authorities in Canada. This move alone is a momentous occasion because Canada does not criticize significant defense initiatives utilized by the United States of America lightly. When a nation raises questions about the economic usefulness of the largest fighter project in the world, it is an indication that something more profound is taking place. During the same time period, a fresh challenge emerged in the industrial landscape of the United States. More than one million individuals have been laid off in the United States defense industry as a result of automation and reorganization since the year 2025. There has been a significant disturbance in the supply chain. Consequently, it has an immediate impact on the dependability of the F-35 production network. Canada is reliant on that network for supplies of parts, upgrades, and maintenance over the long term. If the workforce in the United States is hurt, the entire system will slow down and every partner nation will experience the repercussions of this. In this group of partners, Canada is included. In light of the fact that Canada is still waiting for its fleet to reach full operational capacity, the federal government is now aware of a potential risk. What if the supply chain in the United States becomes unstable or less responsive for a number of years? There have been 16 F-35s delivered to Canada, but the government requires 88 more. The current rate of change is making it impossible to avoid uncertainty. Saab, a Swedish vehicle manufacturer, has entered this moment of uncertainty with a brave and unrequested offer that Canadian government officials have described as economically revolutionary. The idea for the Gripen is straightforward. The fighter will be produced in Canada, which will result in the creation of up to 10,000 direct employment, not to mention the prospect of increasing that number through a worldwide production line that is established on Canadian soil. This is something that no other Western fighter maker is delivering. It is not the United States of America. In no way is it Europe. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for Canada to reestablish something that it failed to do several decades ago. A domestic aerospace ecosystem that is capable of producing combat aircraft and is competitive in the aerospace industry. It was the last time that Canada came near to creating its own fighter aircraft of world-class quality. The Avro Aero, which was scrapped in 1959, was the last time that Canada approached this goal. The memory of that event is still present in the collective consciousness of the Canadian people. There is a direct relationship between Saab and that past, since the corporation offers the possibility of re-establishing national competency but this time without the prohibitively high expenditures of developing a fighter from the ground up. This connects Saab to that past. The implementation of activities in the Arctic is yet another factor that is refocusing Canada's attention in a different direction. Defending the North is one of the most essential duties for Canada, and the Gripen is built to function very well in environments that are extremely cold, like the Arctic. 
It has the ability to function effectively from forward bases that are situated in remote places, it requires less infrastructure for maintenance, and it operates effectively from runways that are shorter. The distinctions between these two are not minor when considered in the perspective of the Canadian military. These are benefits that are absolutely necessary for the task at hand. It is necessary for Canada to have fighter aircraft that are able to travel great distances, land on icy strips, and provide timely service to locations that are far away from southern bases. The Gripen was designed to operate in tough environments, such as those found in the Nordic region, which are temperature and terrain-wise comparable to those found in Canada. The needs of long-range radar coverage missions, Arctic intercepts, and northern sovereignty patrols are tightly aligned with these benefits, which are in close agreement with those criteria. The operational costs have been greatly lowered, which enables Canada to continue high-tempo operations in the Arctic without placing a significant pressure on the defense budget. This is an even better situation than it already was. In addition, this novel concept creates a degree of autonomy that Canada has not encountered in the many decades that have passed since the beginning of this concept. Washington has the right to make decisions about both the supply chain for the F-35 and the choices that are made regarding exports. Every single upgrade, every single maintenance cycle, and every single weapon configuration is influenced by the policy that is implemented by the United States government. During this time, the production method for the Gripen is decentralized and collaborative. This allows partner nations to have a greater say in the decisions that are made about technological advancements, exports, and industrial choices. If Canada makes the decision to accept Saab's offer, it will be able to independently construct, maintain, upgrade, and modify its fighters. This capability will be acquired by Canada. Canadian independence is vital because it reduces the country's vulnerability to the shifting political atmosphere, tariffs, and industrial policies of the United States. This is one of the reasons why Canada's independence is so important. When one considers the current day, this is an even more significant concern. Due to the imposition of additional tariffs by the United States, relations between the United States and Canada have been strained. These tariffs have produced stress in the automobile, agricultural, steel, and technology sectors, which has led to the tension between the two countries. As a result of these tensions, an uncertain climate is formed, which prompted Canada to question whether or not it would be sensible to rely heavily on defense programs controlled by the United States for the next 30 years. Now Canada is sending a signal that it is willing to diversify its economy, which is something that many of its friends have already been doing in response to swings in the global economy. This is something that Canada is doing in response to it. A concerted effort is being made by Europe to enhance its level of defense autonomy. Additionally, mixed fleets have been implemented in Ukraine. Increasingly varied supply networks are being developed in both India and Australia presently. This is not something that is unique to Canada. Rather, it is a part of a pattern that is taking place all over the world. It is important to note that the scope of this discussion goes well beyond the actual specifications of the aeroplane. Sovereignty is the point of contention at hand. The achievement of industrial autonomy is a subject of concentration. In this scenario, the question that needs to be answered is whether Canada will choose to act as a buyer or a constructor. When we talk about employment in Canada, we are not talking about hypothetical forecasts. Rather, we are talking about genuine employment in the manufacturing, engineering, research, and supply chain industries that have the potential to remain in Canada for decades. While the F-35 allows for involvement but does not provide ownership, the Gripen provides ownership as well as long-term control over the industrial process. The F-35 provides participation benefits, but it does not provide ownership benefits. The economic logic is plain. Because of this contrast, everything is different in every manner. The reason that Canada is taking its time with this decision is made abundantly clear by the time we reach the halfway point of this shift at this point. The F-35 continues to be a formidable vehicle that is designed to be stealthy and offers capabilities that are unmatched in terms of its ability to penetrate and its sensor capability. When it comes to the interoperability of the NATO, it is truly an indispensable component. There is no indication that the government of Canada is ignoring these advantages. Nevertheless, it is currently coping with the long-term costs, industrial effect, economic threats, and geopolitical instability that are linked with them. These are all associated with them. The city of Ottawa is well aware of the risks that are associated with relying on a just one provider. 
The Canadian government is giving a mixed fleet approach a great deal of serious thought as a result of this. Through the implementation of this approach, the stealth capabilities of the F-35 are paired with those of a second fighter that provides autonomy, cost efficiency, and long-term value to the domestic market. It is a reflection of the mixed fleet tactics that have proven to be successful for countries that are presented with challenging security conditions, such as Finland and Ukraine. This strategy is a reflection of those tactics. In order to demonstrate your support for the channel, it is essential to remember to give it a like and subscribe the channel before moving on to the next step. In order to study and write these lengthy studies, a great amount of time is required, and your assistance contributes to the promotion of independent defense analysis. During the process of re-evaluating its decisions, the Government of Canada has become aware of an additional significant facet. However, despite the fact that Canada has already committed billions of dollars to the F-35 program, the contract permits modifications to be made to the fleet. It is possible for the Government of Canada to find a middle ground between the requirements for stealth and the economic resilience of the country. The offer that Saab has made to assemble Gripens in Canada is not only delectable due to the employment prospects that it offers, but it is also appealing due to the stability that it provides to the aerospace industry in Canada. It has been several generations since Canada has had supply chain security, local expertise, and long-term resilience all of which may be created through the creation of fighters within the country. In addition to this, it gives the Canadian government the ability to influence future negotiations with any foreign supplier, including the United States of America itself. When contrasted with a nation that is totally reliant on imports, a nation that is in possession of its very own aircraft production line is up against a major difference. The aerospace industry in Canada is ready for a comeback as shown by the conclusions of a more in-depth analysis that was conducted. There are a number of businesses that might benefit from the launch of a domestic Gripen line. Some of these businesses include Bombardier, Pratt and Whitney Canada, CAE, and Magellan Aerospace. An action of this kind has the potential to re-establish thousands of employment that were lost during a prior economic downturns, particularly in the provinces of Quebec and Ontario. This is especially true in the case of the former. There is no room for conjecture in this matter. The strategy that Saab takes to manufacturing is founded on the notion of dividing up the responsibility for production and technology among the partners in its joint ventures. The countries of Sweden, Brazil, and the Czech Republic have all been successful in establishing robust and resilient aerospace enterprises thanks to the usage of this paradigm. That list might be expanded to include Canada at some point in the future. In order for the Canadian authorities to arrive at a resolution regarding their decision, it is not sufficient for them to simply choose between two jets. In the following 30 to 40 years, they will make the decision that will determine the course that Canada's industrial and military future will take. Even though it has expanded stealth capabilities and strong cooperation with NATO, the F-35 has limited domestic economic control. This is despite the fact that it has increased stealth capabilities too. The Grapen is equipped with a number of qualities, including autonomy, cost-effectiveness, performance that is suitable for the Arctic, and enormous industrial boost. Benefits like a stability, robustness, and diversification are all achieved through the utilization of a diversified fleet. There are three distinct types of Canada, one that is more dependent on the policies of the United States, one that is more independent, and one that is strategically balanced. Each style of Canada is characterized by its unique characteristic. This comprehensive transformation is a reflection of a larger movement that is taking place on a continent-wide scale. These days, governments are shifting their focus away from relying on a single source of protection and towards expanding their defensive ecosystems to include several sources. The Government of Canada is keeping a careful eye on that trend, learning from it, and preparing ready-to-make adjustments that are necessary. The offer that was made by Saab comes at the perfect time, since it is in line with the new strategic philosophy that Canada has embraced, which places an emphasis on economic value, autonomy, and resilience. Canada is no longer ready to place its economic destiny in the hands of a single supply chain that is located outside of the nation. Despite the fact that the United States continues to be an important friend, Ottawa is taking into consideration a number of different ways of thinking, including thinking strategically, thinking nationally, and thinking long-term. The reality is not in any way difficult. No matter if Canada decides to pursue a mixed fleet or builds a new production line in partnership with Sweden, 
This conversation indicates that Canada's security strategy is continuously growing. This is the case regardless of whatever option the government chooses to follow. At the same time, it is not desirable for any nation to be completely dependent on another nation for technological developments, components, and improvements. The ability to produce goods is something that no nation would ever want to get rid of. As a result of this, no nation would want to miss out on a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to develop a domestic aerospace inheritance. From this point forward, Canada is in a position of enormous leverage, and the consequences of the choices it chooses next will decide the breadth of its national potential for decades to come. Unambiguously, the message that will determine the outcome is that the choice will not be entirely based on the individual boxer. This is the most important factor to consider when it comes to economic power, stability, and sovereignty. As a consequence of this discussion, Canada is in the process of rewriting its future and entering a new era in which it is demanding more value, deeper relationships, and stronger local capabilities. This narrative is still in the process of developing, but it is already obvious which direction it will go in the future. It is Canada's aim that at some point in the future, it will be able to develop, maintain, and exercise control over a bigger amount of its military strength that is located on Canadian land. You should make sure to give the channel a like and subscribe to it before you go, so that you can stay up to date with the next chapter of this developing story. Your assistance is what keeps these studies going, and it ensures that you will never miss the most critical movements in global defense. Thank you for your help. <laughs> it is currently being written that the future of Canadian air power will be written. No other program in the United States is able to provide the same level of local control and employment opportunities as Grapen. The Canadian government is currently evaluating the relative importance of autonomy, industry, and long-term sovereignty.